I'm joined today with Irene Lutz from Quinn Cycles. Irene, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about your personal biking history. When did you start biking? Um, oh, my personal biking history. This is fun. Okay, I started biking when I was a kid, like most people, and I don't. Most people remember um, probably falling, but once they get the hang of biking, having a joyous, joyful time, and I do remember both of those things. But then I stopped biking for a while, and I rediscovered it when I was in college. And I started biking around town when I was here in Quincy and biking down to the beach. And I just discovered this new passion for a, a way to get around that didn't require me to have to find a parking spot and pay for gas. So that was really exciting. And then later, when I met my husband and we, we were married and we had a, a, my son, um, we started biking for transportation a little bit more as a family. And he started, my husband that is, started bike commuting and I started, we put a seat on our bike and I took my son around and we'd bike out to um, kids programs and just started biking more and more, started doing our grocery shopping by bike. And then when I was pregnant with my daughter, we decided that we would just sell our car and use our bikes as our main form of transportation and supplement that with um, public transit. And we were fortunate at that time that Zipcar was becoming a thing, so we used that as well. We are a very multimodal family. Great. It must be so nice to not have to worry about finding parking spaces and gas prices and all that fun. Yeah, it does alleviate some transportation stress, but there are other factors that come into it, like planning and, um, and thinking about the weather a little bit more, perhaps. Right. So everything's a trade-off. And you're with an organization called Quinn Cycles. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about Quinn Cycles and what you do there? Sure, I can. We're a volunteer organization. Um, the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church started um, the organization about six or seven years ago and called together a bunch of people who wanted to make conditions for cyclists in Quincy better. And we incorporated as a nonprofit and we've been working with the city. Um, some of our members are also on the Mayor's Bicycle Commission and we um, have rides all, all year through, I'm sorry, not all year, April through November. We do two rides a month throughout the city. We like to highlight Quincy's um, beauty and accessibility. So we have an annual ride to all of Quincy's beaches. We also have an annual ride from Nut Island all the way up into the Blue Hills. So we like to show off our, our city, but we also like to invite people who might want to just try biking, who aren't comfortable riding on our streets or who aren't um, avid cyclists. So we are very social biking group and we like to make people who aren't necessarily identifying as bicyclists or or people who bike into people who bike because Great. they gain comfort and skills our march 4th session highlights fixing a flat um, can you walk us through the basics of that or do you have any tips for how to do it nice and quickly so you don't end up being late to work? Yes, I'd love to talk about bike fixing a flat. So um, I don't know if when you learn to drive, somebody told you you know how to change a tire on a car. Well, similar thing, when you're out on your bike, the there's a chance that you can get a flat tire. And um, rather than your ride being over, we want to, we at Quinn Cycles want everybody to have the skills to be able to change that flat tire and get back on the ride. And especially important when you have when you're biking to work or you have a deadline to get somewhere. We are we're going to have people bring their own bikes in um, in limited numbers because the, of the space restrictions, um, so they can practice taking the t their wheels off their bike and putting them back on. We're going to um, have the tools that you need to practice removing the side of the tire and getting the tube out of the bike will teach you how to uh, examine the tire for where the hole, where the puncture came from, and how to remove anything that may create another puncture. Um, we'll teach you how to replace the tube um, and inflate it to the right pressure after you've put the tire back on, and how to put your wheel back on the bike. Some really important information to have and something that anyone riding a bike should definitely have in their arsenal. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, you don't want your ride ruined, right? Definitely By a not. flat tire or by a, a, a piece of glass on the road. This will get you back out there riding as, as quickly as you can. We all want to be educated and safe riders. What are some tips that we should always keep in mind on any bike ride that we go on? Always keep in mind being predictable. And you can do that by obeying the rules of the road. 
and being a, a communicating cyclist. So use your hand signals, keep yourself visible to the drivers around you, whether that's all through clothing, and, but also positioning on the road. You don't want to hug the curb between parked cars and jump right out. That's a very startling and unpredictable situation to a driver who's on the road next to you. So you want to be predictable, be visible, be aware of everything around you, cars who may be turning, driveways that are approaching, um, pedestrians, and road signs coming up so that you can, again, obey the rules of the road. Make sure you know how to handle your bike. What are some things that we can do to make sure that we're helping keep bikers safe? Helping keep bikers safe is a wonderful question. Thank you. Um, I think for drivers, knowing that even if you don't feel like you're intimidating, to, your, to a cyclist on the road that your vehicle can feel intimidating to a cyclist on the road. So please give us um, at least three feet of space when you're passing and slow down a little if you can. You're going faster than we are and you'll still get to your destination. <laughs> Probably before we'll get to ours because we're working harder on a, on a bike. But um, so, so that and um, know that we are, we're people on a bike. I, I think sometimes when we're in cars and, and out and we're frustrated and um, dealing with congestion, we can forget that the people who are driving around us and the people who are operating bikes around us are, are people. So That's I try to connect to the, the people who are driving around me with, you know, make eye contact and see, see each other's humanity. It's really important to remember and yeah. key to sharing the road and sharing all spaces. Absolutely. For those who are new to Quincy or might be coming to Quincy to visit for a day, what are some things about biking in Quincy that they should know that they might not have experienced in other cities or towns? Quincy is working on building our bike network, our bikeway network. Right now, there's not, um, not a lot of designated space specifically for bicyclists. That's going to change, and it is changing currently. Um, we have a nice new bike lane on Washington Street and we're getting more um, Complete Streets projects funding from the state. So we'll have some new spaces where people will hopefully feel more comfortable riding. But for the most part, there's a lot of sharing of the lane. And so um, recognizing that the law allows you to be on the la in the lane and to share it with, with drivers. And also um, that Quincy is bikeable. We are, uh, if you ride into our train stations, most destinations in Quincy are at least, at most, three miles from a, a train station, which is about a half an hour bike ride, makes if that, depending on your pace. It makes <laughs> it really easy to get around town and get around the greater Boston area in general. Absolutely, yes, it does, it does. Um, we live in a, in a great bikeable um, metro area. What are some of your favorite places to bike in Quincy? Are you willing to share any hidden gems that maybe some other people don't know about? Hidden gems in Quincy. There is a great path um, in Marina Bay. Um, if you are at the Neponset Bridge and you do the Quincy River Walk and you're coming down Commander Shea Boulevard, which is beautiful for its views of the Neponset River, um, there's the um, Billings Salt Marsh trail mm -hmm. that comes down an airport road. It's sort of a, a hidden gem that I discovered through one of our members. He likes to um, organize rides for us that are called Discovering Quincy Rides, where he shows us a little like back roads, l community, um, not on the main streets, so quieter, lower stress routes through different parts of the city. And this was one that I didn't know about. And uh, so it's a lovely um, trail through a salt marsh. Um, it sort of connects Commander Shea and the Dunkin' Donuts at Quincy Shore Drive, so you can then access the beach. That's great. Yeah. And it's located next to a Dunkin's, which is important for me. <laughs> always, always. We, our rides, we usually end them with a, a social gathering for coffee or treats. So That's great. Yeah. And on the opposite end of that, are there any notorious spots in Quincy that bikers should look out for, um, really check their surroundings a little more than they usually do? Well, there are roads that I would not recommend biking on, um, and what I would encourage people to to know is that there are alternatives. So, um, if you're getting somewhere quick in the city, you you would want to drive down Newport Avenue most likely. But if you're on a bike, you, most people, even even avid cyclists like me, would not ride on a on a street with. 40 to 50 mile an hour traffic 
so with four lanes. So um, knowing your alternatives out outside of that, I think is good. But that being said, there isn't any place in the city that's inaccessible by bike. It's about route choice and knowing your options. Outside of Quincy, what are some of the coolest or most exciting places that you've biked? Oh my gosh, in the last two years, and it's not that far out of Quincy, it's just on the other side of the Neponset River, but we have a beautiful bike trail um, from Mattapan to the Pope John Paul Park. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. I, I love it. It makes me feel so happy to know that right here, um, right along our river, I can bike with pedestrians and just feel like I can feel the real freedom and of, of biking. And the Harvest Bridge just makes me smile every time I see it. It sounds like a really nice escape from the hustle and bustle of city life. Yeah, and if you're commuting to Boston or, or farther, it can be part of your commute. Is there anything we didn't cover yet that you'd like to cover? I would like to thank all the sponsors for this program that um, have made it possible. We are working with the Mayor's Bicycle Commission, of which I am a citizen member, but um, the support that we've gotten from that organization is, is essential to this series being available. Also, traffic parking alarm and lighting have donated um, these great light sets, so um, biking in the winter or, or early spring can um, be challenging because your commute puts you in the dark hours and having lights is a, a key visibility um, requirement and so TPAL donated these little light sets it's a white light and a red light that can clip onto your bike via rubber band here um, we'll be giving those out as part of the series to anyone who needs one and um, I'd also like to thank the library you guys have been so gracious in welcoming us to your space and allowing us to do some slightly dirty work in there. Um, and I would also like to thank the law firm of Breakstone, White & Gluck. We are one of their Kids Safe um, partners for giving away helmets. And so they have given us um, a number of their larger sizes helmets so that we can give those to riders who may not have one. Um, protecting, our, protecting yourself uh, and your one and only brain is um, it, it, it's essential and, and not required, but highly recommended for, for adults. And so we wanted to honor the kid at heart in everyone and provide safe riding equipment. Well, I know that we're really excited to have such an important program taking place at the library, so thank you for helping us out with putting this great program on. Happy to do it. For more information on the Bicycling Education Series or to register for the programs, visit thomascranelibrary.org or give the library a call at 617-376-1300, extension 3. Thank you.